this is Wendy from Knitters Brewing and today I'm going to demonstrate knitting and purling through the back loop and then I'm going to show you three examples of how I regularly use these simple techniques to improve the appearance of my knitting. First let's start with knitting through the back loop. Normally when we knit we go from the left to right under the front leg of the next loop on the needle like this. When we knit through the back loop, we go from the right to the left through the back loop on the needle as the name of the technique suggests. You still wrap it around the same way and pull it through. Let's do that one more time. So you insert it from the right to the left through the back loop on the needle and wrap it around as you normally do, pull the new stitch through. And what that results in is a slightly twisted stitch. You will see the leg twists over the right leg. Purling through the back loop is slightly more tricky, but you can do it. Normally when we purl, we go from the right to the left through the front leg of a stitch like this. When we purl through the back loop, we're going to come from behind and we're going to come up through that back leg of the loop and then wrap it around like we normally do to purl and pull the stitch back through like you normally do when you purl. So let me show you that one more time. You come up through the back loop from below and bring it back through. All right, one more time. Take your needle around from the back, come up through the back loop, wrap, and take it back out like you normally do. And again, this results in twisting. You don't see it so much from the back, but if you look at the front stitches, you can see they're twisted just like they were with knitting through the, purl, through the back loop. Here is the first example that I want to show you of how these techniques can be incorporated into your work. In this example, I'm showing you a project where you have multiple rows or rounds of slip slip knit that are alternated with rows or rounds of regular knit stitches. And it could be, say, decreases around a neckline or an armhole, or it could be just a decorative pattern like I'm showing here. So typically, if you do a, a slip slip knit and then follow it in the next round with a regular knit stitch, you see this zigzagging effect that gets shown here in this example on the left. Now, alternatively, if in the following row, after doing a slip slip knit, you do a knit one through the back loop, you get a much straighter line here that is more well-defined and tidier looking. So if your project is in being worked in the round, in the following round after a slip slip knit, you would do a knit one through the back loop. If your project is flat, then in the following round, you would do a purl one through the back loop on the stitch where the slip slip knit was done. Here's a second example of how I use knitting through the back loop in my work. Stitches that are knit through the back loop tend to pop up a little bit and they will stand out against a knitted, plain knitted background. So in this case, uh, this design uses traveling stitches and they go out to the side and then the design goes straight up for a little while before they come back in. In this area where the stitches are just uh, going straight up in the design, had they just been knit with regular knit stitch, this whole section right in here on each side would have blended right into the background. But because these stitches were knit through the back loop, they pop up a little bit and it gives that design, it allows that design to carry up even though there are no traveling stitches right in that area. The final example I want to show you where I frequently work stitches through the back loop is with ribbing. 
In this example, I've got a sock ribbing around the cuff. This is a fingering weight yarn on size one needles, but you will see this effect with larger gauges as well. In the lower example, this is standard knit one, purl one ribbing. You can see that the columns of stitches are not very uniform, they're wiggly, and it looks the same on both sides. In this example, the columns are much more uniform and tidy looking. In this example, I have done knit one, purl one through the back loop. It looks very nice. And on the wrong side, you will see the twisted stitches from the purling through the back loop. So if you're working a sock in the round or a cuff or anything like that, you'll always be on the right side. So you will work knit one, purl one through the back loop all the way around. If you're working flat, like I've done here, then it's knit one, purl one through the back loop when you are on the right side. And on the wrong side, it is knit one through the back loop, purl one all the way across.